our next guest in studio started his career as an undrafted free agent until he caught on with the Patriots in 2009. Now he has nearly a decade of experience in the NFL and he's taken his talents to San Francisco. It is Brian Hoyer and we welcome him Thanks, into guys. the show. So we have to get this perspective because you did play with Tom Brady. Tell us something about Tom that not a lot of people know about him. Oh man, uh, I don't know if there's anything that to tell that people don't know about him. <laughs> I think uh, he's an intense competitor. I think these two guys would agree. Um, he hates to lose. And I was just doing a, a thing that they're gonna film or air later and we would, we would do this uh, ball drill where we try to throw it in the trash can. And I got up on him on one day because we I made three in a row. He went triple or nothing. and. He just never ended up paying me. He just wanted to keep pushing the game until eventually he could probably come back and win. And then they, a year later, he ended up paying me. But um, you know what? I, I really credit my time with him and, and being, you know, in that that organization to the success, the success that I've had because um, I learned to do it the right way. And I think that's the one thing about Tom is he comes in every day. He's prepared and and he works hard at it. And that's what I was able to see for three years. Did he pay you back with interest? No, no interest. <laughs> Brian, you made a you made a few stops in your NFL career. That, like, describe your path throughout your throughout your career. Yeah, I think for me, it's always about going where the best opportunity is. Mm -hmm. And and um, unfortunately, I've had to move the past four years. But I'm really ha excited and happy to be where I am right now with the 49ers and and to be the starting quarterback there and, and to um, you know keep playing. I think I could have settled to be a backup somewhere, but you know I don't want to have any regrets. I know that I can still play in this league and. And unfortunately, I was injured last year after having a few good games. And, and um, so after this offseason, the work we put in, I'm really excited for, for us to get started up in, in uh, a few weeks. First of all, us undrafted free agents got to stick together. Sure. Damon wouldn't know nothing about that, <laughs> about that life. But how excited are you to be reunited with Cal Shanahan, somebody who you've experienced great success with? And how has it been with a Brown around a bunch of young teams that San Francisco is extremely young? Yeah, I think first with Kyle, that was the selling point. When when my agent told me that the 49ers wanted me um, and it was an opportunity to play with Kyle his first year as a head coach, it was something that in my gut I just didn't want to pass up on. Um, you know, we, we were together in Cleveland and, and I felt like we didn't get to finish it out, out there the way we would have liked. So to have that opportunity to have a second chance, uh, so to say, was something I didn't want to pass up on. And, and when you, you talk about young team, gosh, I, I still look at myself as the young guy and then I look around the locker room and, and here I am, one of the older guys. So it's fun. I think, um, you know, we've had a lot of turnover with the 49ers. I think we have 53 new guys on the roster. So to, you know, come together as a team in the off season where basically everybody's new, you have a, a solid core guy, solid core group of guys from, from the year before and, and kind of just incorporating everyone. It's, it's been a fun process and, and to kind of be in that mentor or uh, you know veteran role is something that's been fun for me to do. Lifelong Chicago Bears fan here. We talked about this. Uh, I was a Jay Cutler apologist and oftentimes even on this show he has been eviscerated for the way he carried himself and maybe even sometimes for the success and failures of the team. What were your experiences like with Jay? Um, I really enjoyed my year with Jay. I think um, he's misunderstood. Um, I think he's going to do great at what he's, what he's, what, you know, kind of uh, venturing into. I think, um, you know, he has a unique personality. There's no doubt about it. But the time that I spent with him, day in, day out, you know, hours upon hours, um, I really grew to have an appreciation for who he is. Um, you know, he tells it exactly like it is, and and he doesn't have time for, you know, any crap. So I think that was the one thing that I really uh, appreciated about Jay and. And obviously, wish him well with what what he's you know venturing into, and I think he's going to do a great job. Into the broadcast booth. Yeah, you're from Cleveland. Mm -hmm. Big Cavs fan, correct? For sure. Any concern about LeBron leaving after the next season? <laughs> oh man, I don't think so. I think um, you know he went off and he did his thing in Miami, and and now he's back. Um, you know, obviously, how many straight finals he's been to? Obviously, they didn't get it done this year. Um, but you know, I, I really feel like you know he's back for good and. If not, you know, I think the one thing that, that I'll say is when he left for Miami, it was, I think, my rookie year or second year. And, mm -hmm. and being a professional athlete, you realize there's a business side right. business side to it. So, you know, even though I was from Cleveland, there was no hard feelings there. You know, you got you to gotta do what's best for you and your family, and, and that's part of it. But I think now, you know, he came back. He brought us our first championship in however many years. And, um, you know, I think they're going to do what it takes to – obviously, you got to compete with Golden State. And um, – the one thing now being in the Bay Area, I, had, I was surrounded by a lot of Golden State fans, right. and um, it, it was rough to watch. But 
gosh, Kevin Durant, I mean, was just unbelievable in that series. So I think they got to do something to be able to, to help them match up with KD. So you're going to be that Cavs fan in the Golden State bar that everybody looks at when he walks through the door. No, I like watched from home. I watched from home. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think it would be a good look for, for the new quarterback to be out cheering for the Cavs in, 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 the, uh, in the bars or anything like that. So I, I stayed home and watched it. And like I said, it was tough. I thought maybe after the one game they'd be able to turn around. But I think KD was just too much. Now, recently, you took your guys down to, to Dallas or Texas yep. to um, kind of have a, a semi mini camp. How important is that as far as building a culture and trying to teach these young you know, players what it's like to be a professional and build that type of chemistry? How important is that? Yeah, I think it was good. I think for me, it was the first time I've ever really done anything like that because usually I stay close to where our team facility is. Um, now, you, know, you mentioned being from Ohio, having a house there. We wanted to get back and. So my goal was to try to find a, a central location where a lot of guys could show up. I mean, you can't accommodate everyone. So we picked Dallas. Um, a few of our guys were already going to be down there in the offseason. Um, our receiver, Aldrick Robinson, went to Southern Methodist. He was able to secure their facilities for us. So we just said, hey, look, if you can make it, great. If not, it's not a big deal. We rented a few houses on, on VRBO and tried to accommodate as many people as we could and, and got three, day, three good days of work in. And I think it's crucial because you know, from the time you end mini camp to when training camp starts, it's about six weeks. So you don't want to just get back on day one of training camp and kind of have to start all over again. So it was a good midway point for us to get back and go over some of the things. Like I mentioned before, a lot of new guys. I think of all, I think we had 19 guys there, and of those 19, only two were with the 49ers last year. And obviously, it's a new system, a new new coaching staff, and we want to just kind of you know stay fresh on on what we did in the off season.